I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I stand. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. 19th of May, 1976. That's when delegates from around Australia came together to discuss forming a national association. Here we are today, 45 years later, coming together in a format they could not have imagined all those years ago. Today we're thankful that they did come together all those years ago, just as we're thankful for all those who have nurtured the organisation during the ensuing years, bringing us to this event in this way today. On your behalf, I thank the New South Wales Floral Art Association Convention Organising Committee for all of the work that they have accomplished in bringing this event to life in what we would all agree are very challenging times. As floral artists, we are inspired by everything around us. Over the next two days, let us continue to be inspired. Let us learn new ways of using floral material. Let us appreciate the efforts of all those who tested their design skills by entering the competition. Let's learn from the insights of our floral art judges. Welcome, one and all, wherever in this special country or around the world you are. I declare the 2021 Australian Floral Art Association Convention, New Visions, officially open. Enjoy. Welcome to the Australian Floral Art Association National Convention 2021 being hosted by the New South Wales Floral Art Association entitled New Visions. Our feature demonstration today in this first session is Francine Thomas from New Zealand. Let me introduce Francine to you to those of you who don't know her. Growing up in the floral industry from an early age, Francine always had a passion for flowers and after many years managing a floral wholesale business, she finally joined her local floral art group in 2005. Francine is a Floral Art Society of New Zealand teacher, judge, demonstrator and lecturer. Apart from a background in managing a wholesale business in flowers and supplies for eight years, she has had her own wholesale floral supply business for 10 years with qualifications in garden centre retail, horticulture and plant propagation, she enjoys a strong knowledge of plants, an important element in floral art. Flowers and floral art are Francine's passion. She's inspired by what she sees and feels in nature, and this is a big part of her designing. I'm sure that we will all be inspired by her skills today. Please join me in welcoming Francine Thomas from New Zealand. Kia ora, Francine. Oh, kia ora from New Zealand too. It's lovely to see you, Kim, and to everybody out there. It's just lovely to be able to be a part of your wonderful show, convention. Um, I'd like to um, do a few different designs today. Hopefully you'll get inspired by some of them. Um, the designs that I've seen that were put up, absolutely magic by your designers in Australia. I don't know, this is my partner in crime, this is Faye Edgkin, and she'll be assisting me, so you'll see her walking in and around while I'm doing the demonstration. Thanks, buddy, for being here. Right. So, well, we'll make a start anyway. I do have another camera going, so if we want to do zoom ups, let me know. Um, so, anyway, I'll start with the first one. So, this one here is um, just working with rhythm and line. Um, in this design and on here I've used um, a native grass or reed here called oi oi and I've bound this with the aluminium wire on the inside and then I've just taken it across and I've got these lovely little bubble um, test tubes, they're like little glass bubbles that I'm giving it lovely rhythm and space where you can actually see the flowers. Now these little tubes are great for using your really small delicate flowers that you might have. So I actually been into the garden and I've picked some nasturtiums so I've got some lovely nasturtiums, but anything special that you've got, some little treasures, that's what I would put in here. And before I do that, another thing you can do with this, if you wanted to turn the tubes, is you could make, make this into a wall-mounted design as well, by having it where it's actually coming on a wall. There's lots of different concepts with this. So on the piece of timber, I've put some really long nails, and I've bound the um, oi-oi with the aluminium wire on the inside, 
bound over the top with um, bullion wire, and then I spiked it onto the nails to hold it. I wanted something really strong, quite a strong mechanic. So all I'm going to do is just add these um, lovely nasturtiums. Can you all hear me okay? I hope so. <laughs> anyway, I'll pop the nasturtiums in and uh, just pop these where they're just floating in that lovely vibrant colour at the moment. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Just cutting them nice and short. Now, I was quite amazing with the nasturtiums. I did this the other day and they lasted for four or five days in here and it just looked magic. The idea is not to have too many different varieties of plant material. I want the nasturtiums to be the star. I don't want to overcrowd it by putting all different varieties. I just want one variety of plant material in here, so, um, as far as the flowers go. So in giving a bit of colour, taking my eye in, I'll just find one that's not too marked. I'll put one right down into this inside here, take the colour in through. It's all about colour balance, colour rhythm. Taking the eye out through the back here, put more in through here. A little bit more out through here, but the nasturtiums are lovely, but this looks really gorgeous with any of your specials, anemones, ranunculus, those lovely little spring treasures. Looks really beautiful too with Bellinopsis orchids, but I'm using them for something else, but I'm just going to pop a couple of them here. Now we need to think about colour balance and colour rhythm to take our eye through. Because these are so vibrant, our eyes are coming back here. So we need to take a little bit of that colour down and through the design. So I'm just going to pop a few down and through here. Another one down and through here, in the eye in. If all else fails, you can put them in your salad. <laughs> right, put another one here, and I want to take the colour right out to the end here. So I'm just going to pop one just right out through there. Take my eye through. We'll get those to Faye here. Thanks, Faye. Right, so just showing you something quite simple, just by using your special blooms from the garden and uh, quite a nice design piece for a table centre piece. Another thing that looks really good is doing two of these, having another one going the other way, and then just a bowl of your spring flowers or your special blooms in the middle and a glass vase looks gorgeous. So that's design number one. So I'll just go back to Faye. Yep, that'd be lovely, Faye. Thank you. So with the next design, I was wandering down in the garden and I like to have a look and see what I've got around where I can make mechanics from. And I found the seed pods off my liquid amber. So on here, I've got my liquid amber pods and I've glued them all together and I've made two circles that are uh, three dimensional. So they've got a bit of a hole in the middle here and, and mounted them onto the rods with a little block of oasis in here, but you can use test tubes as well if that's what you, cho you know, choose to do. In order to make these, I had just a, a deep bowl. I glued the uh, liquid amber pods into the bowl to get that nice curved shape. I let them dry, glue set well overnight, um, and then I just painted them, just tickled them up with a little bit of darker colour of a stain. I wanted them a little bit deeper in colour. So that's what I've done here. This is all about textual contrast. We're going from that real broken textual form. Um, looks quite rough when you're looking at these. And in here, I've got some beautiful um, green cymbidium orchids. I have some aspidistra leaves. And again, we don't want a lot of plant material in here. I'm going to get my aspidistra. And I'm going to pop it into the foam that I've got inside here. And I'm going to roll it, tuck them around. I'll just show you what I'm doing once I've actually finished. A couple of these will pop these in any again, rolling it, turning it so it comes down and into the design. Just that little bit of touch of the green in through here, following our eye so it comes down. Another one in here, one in through there, bringing it down, lining it up. Oops, Rosie, we don't want that one. I might need a little bit of a glue dash here. You can have a bit of a help with this one. A little sticky dot on the back. Take that one up in here. 
bringing it down through to bring our eye down. Making it in. Just again, bringing it through. So I've got the lovely lush green leaves coming down. And then all I wanted to do was use the um, Cymbidium orchid so that it came down through the design. So I'm just going to cut that now. Pop that in through there. This one in here. Get an angle so it comes down. And then I just need a little bit of paper coat of wire just to hold it into place. Tie it in here. Oh, get that in there. Now there's a hole in here somewhere. So I hope you're all good out there. We've got a magic day here in New Zealand today. The sun's shining. It's so jolly hot. I've got the fan on actually. <laughs> just getting a little bit warm. I'll put one in through there. I'll just turn this around and you'll see what I mean when you see it. It just needs just another little placement there in a tube. here just turn this around just so you can see what i'm doing so far just as the cymbidiums coming down touch a lime green just looks very special i feel it freshens anything up so i'll just pop a couple of these into the center and through here take your eye right back up into that design but this is just showing you just picking something from the garden the lovely pods that you've got over there you could do this with the gum nuts just making a circle of gum nuts would look really gorgeous as well that one in there, not like that. No. I might actually wire one of these as well. A little bit of wire on here. Want that just to hang down. Just down and through there. I talk to myself a lot. One day they're going to talk back to me and I'm going to be in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Face looking at me going, yes, we're already in trouble, Francine. So, yeah. <laughs> Francine, there's a question. How have you attached the spheres to the ball? Um, I've used uh, paper coated wire and about offset the two of them. And then I've tied that onto the pole. And I can show you how I've done that. It's just, um, you could do this with a piece of timber and do bits of dowel. But I've just wanted to bring that one down there. Got that one there. Cut that one through there. Just wanted one to come right down. So what I've done here with the mechanics is in behind here, I've got one half of the sphere um, and I've tied that on here with paper coated wire and I've bound it in two places. And that's why I've got this piece of aspidistra that I've painted brown to come over the top. So it's been tied because the sphere has got gaps in between where you've glued. You can easily put your wires through there and secure it onto your mechanics. And then likewise, I've tied it here. I've joined the two here with paper coated wire. And then I've joined them down here with paper coated wire and the chocolate brown so you can't see it. And then I've just secured it here. I'll bring it up a bit closer and see where I've just tied it with the paper coated wire onto the pole at the base. So it's, it's well and truly secured and that's not gonna go anywhere. And then you end up with a really neat mechanic. And I'll be able to reuse these and do different things with these. So you can have them going where they're laying flat offset or on top of each other with flowers coming in and around the center of the circle. Lots of options. Once you've made it, you will reuse it. Thanks, Faye. Okay, so here. Thanks, Faye. She's doing a great job here. <laughs> Gotta keep her busy, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Right, now I'm not sure if you can see the top of that. We might have to just lift the camera ever so slightly. Just lift it up just a little bit. Now I love to use with, um, might need to come down just a teeny mini bit, Faye. Just a teeny down? Bit. Yep, just down just a teeny bit. That's it, perfect. Um, this here is made from volcanic rock. This is our pumice stone. And I love to go to a place down in Taupo, which is the big lake in the centre of the North Island, and gather the pumice from around the edges. And um, it's such so light. And it's when the volcano is exploding underground, it blasts all the pumice or the, or the rock up and it heats really quick and becomes very porous. So I drill holes into it. It slices really well, but don't tell your husband when you're using his, uh, his saw. 
because it does blunt it. Uh, and then I've threaded it onto some aluminium rod here that I've got that I've bent into the curved shape. And then I've bound it all onto there and threaded it all onto my shape. And then underneath, I've just put some, um, I've got just a couple of cages here to hold the foam. You can do this with test tubes as well if you wanted to go the test tube way. Um, but it looks, it's a really effective um, design. So I might actually take this off the table for the weight that's on it. Just pop, I'll take it off the turntable. table. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put out a selection of plant material. So I've got some um, Fats Hedera leaves. I'll just put a few of these in here. So this is Fats Hedera, one of my favourite leaves to use. Put a couple of pieces in through here. Tuck that in. Just to get, it might need to wire that actually. A little bit soft, so I'll just give that a bit of a wire. Wire the leaves. Get one in through there. Just want a little bed for these to sit in. Um, I don't think I need those to sit in over there for the moment. Um, and then I've got here some chrysanthemums. I've got some um, elfin lilies. I've also have some succulents. I have pre-rolled the um, aspidistra, uh, the astelia. And when I've pre-rolled this, I did this two days ago, when it dries, we end up these lovely ringlets, which is fabulous to work with. So I'm just going to start with these lovely elfin lilies. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of a stick inside them. I could have done with some big sticks or small sticks, but that's okay. And I'll pop them into the into the foam in here. That just helps anchor them in. Grab the other one here. So the, by using the kebab stick or the stick, it's acting like a capillary action where the moisture will come up from the foam, the moisture that's in the foam, and it'll go into the stem via the, um, the kebab stick. They're very porous and they're fabulous for doing this with because the uh, alfin does not like to be in foam. So that's why we don't get this much. Pop a couple of these back. And by using the stick, it secures it into place, but it also takes the moisture up into the flower. This around a moment for you to see, but these ones here are shorter, so they'll be fine. I'll just pop them in there. Through here, just take my eye through, and I'm watching the way in which these are flowing. I want the points to follow each other to give me that rhythm. So it takes my eye through the design. And through there. Tidy up as I go. You tidy kiwi. <laughs> Another one in through here. And there. I'm going to use a little bit of the Asteria now just to fill in a few of the gaps to give me that rhythm as well. But cut these down. This in here. I'll turn this so you can see what I'm doing on the side here in a moment. A little bit of that to come through there. I might need to just take that one out. I'll put it with a loop and I've got some mossing pins. Friend, take it up and through here. And I'm just uncurling them. And these will last. I can reuse these over and over again. And they uh, are really good once you've got them. They're fabulous to work with. over and through this side. How's that looking, Faye? Good. That's a relief. <laughs> she wouldn't tell me otherwise. Well, maybe she would. <laughs> Just putting a few of these um, little chrysanthemums in on this side, and I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. Bring this in through here. You can see that lovely rhythm that's been created. So I'm just going to repeat that on this other side. A little bit of this up and through here, though. 
again going to roll it and because it's been pre-rolled it actually rolls extremely well when we're wanting to put it into our design so i'm just going to roll this in and through here take that one out i like that one coming through and another one Like you can tell I was a hairdresser, can't you? All the pin curls. We can relate to the pin curls. <laughs> Come through there. This one comes back. The one out through here. It is such a lovely day out there. So it was a good morning this morning getting ourselves all ready. They came out nice and early, so getting more organized. That's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to turn this around again so you can see that side there. I'm going to put a couple of these right in the centre here. I really need to see what I'm doing with this one. Right. Just something about the contrast of textures that we've got here, the shine from the acelia coming through, the shine from the fats headers, but also the um, dull look coming through the textural contrast that we've got related with the pumice rock for the smooth forms of the um, elfin lilies. A few chrysanthemums just in through here as well. Francine, there's a question, what type of pumice is it and which drill do you use? Pumice is uh, the pumice rock from uh, Taupo, the Taupo region. Very light pumice that's just all around the edges of Lake Taupo. To drill through. But um, you have to make sure you keep your hands out of the way that you don't slip. <laughs> but it's, um, yes. Again, don't tell the boys when you're in the workshop. And for the boys watching, <laughs> that's okay. If it gets a bit blunt, you'll know why. <laughs> But it is uh, very easy to drill. It's also, if you use a hacksaw blade, it's extremely easy to slice. It slices really well as, as well. So now I'm going to use here, I've got have some succulents. I'm going to put a couple of succulents. Again, I'm wanting that little bit of color coming through, but I'm also wanting the waxy look that they create. It's a contrast against the pumice rock. So Put some of these in and I'm putting a kebab stick in these just to hold them. I use a big one on this one, it's quite a biggie. It's one of my favorite designs to do working with the pumice. Michael Cordero is asking, what are the Estelia leaves and how do you dry them? Uh, the Estelia leaves are a form of flax, a type of flax. It's called Estelia chitamica, and it, it comes from the Chatham Islands, and it was discovered many years ago. Um, it can be a little bit fickle to grow. I've got it growing in the garden, um, but it just is just such a very easy to grow, uh, rich, it likes rich soil and well fertilized because it takes so many nit nitrates up out of the soil to grow. So I picked these three days ago and then I, I picked them from the garden and then I just rolled them up around my hand like this. Very simple. Put a pin in through it like this, put them on the bench and forgot about them. And then they will dry like that and you can reuse them. With fresh, it's very strong. It's quite a strong one, so you need to let it dehydrate just a little bit so that you get that lovely rhythm. A few more of these in through here. Yep, that'd be great. And then I have just a couple of special treasures I'm going to pop in. I was going to use the roses, but don't think I need those. Don't need that, don't need that. Get all of those over here. Right, and then I have some special blooms. Faye's going to pass them to me. I have some white phalaenopsis orchids that I'm going to bring in. Find where I want to put them. There's one there. Okay. I want these to come down over the side. Thank you. 
just wanted these beautiful phalaenopsis just to come over because it's a real contrast now. But we need unity, so I need to put one on the other side to give me a little bit of unity to bring it through. Well, that's, do you like that design there? That's that one we have finished with the Phalaenopsis orchids and just the contrast of textures showcasing them and um, that's that design three. Right, now the next design here is this design that I've made. So this one here is using um, a hula hoop for a very small person, it's not my one. <laughs> and then I have in here that I've attached to it a bird spike. Now uh, these normally come in long runs and you buy them from Bunnings or Mitre 10 and you screw them to the top of the fence to stop the birds landing on them. But I thought what a beautiful way of being able to make a bouquet uh, type of frame or um, a structure where you can actually carry this. I thought that you can hang this on the wall. It's got a lot of options. Um, so in here you can see the bird spike in here. I bound it with jute. And then in here, this is preserved hydrangea. And it's absolutely beautiful. So I've got the preserved hydrangea. I also have on here a little bit of the preserved amaranthus. And I have some preserved roses here that I'm going to pop in here. It, I thought I'd just sew something that you can pre-do and have up on the wall or for something special. I thought the colour of this rose went absolutely beautiful with the... Um, Amarantha. So these are preserved roses and they're just going to come into the centre here and I'm going to just twist the wire around. I also have in here that I've mounted onto the bird spikes, I have some test tubes so that I can add fresh plant material in here if I so chose to do that. But I thought we'd just use these roses today to pop a few of them in through here. And the colour is just divine. A real lovely autumn toning, this one is. We're just opening the roses up just a little bit. Pop this in through here. That sits in. I pre-wired all these, so it just saves a little bit of time when you're doing them. But the roses are just divine. And some of you that are doing the workshop will be working with these, and they are really great to have. So they are a real rose that's been treated and will last like a commercial rose. Uh, fresh rose but they last a lot longer and you can do so many more things with them so put this one up through here another one up onto the top just anchor this one up here some more into here so this one i think is called sandstorm i think it's just beautiful I mean, I love to use fresh, but sometimes it's really hard to get a lot of fresh flowers, especially here at the moment in New Zealand, because Auckland's been in lockdown and a lot of our growers are up there. So it's been very hard to get fresh um, plant material, fresh roses and things. I'm just going to put another one just in through here. Make our eye up through the back. But this one is also showing off the space. We want to have space in between our blooms. So I have the space of the um, elevating the hydrangea up. So it's been elevated to show that space in between the frame and the foliage and plant material. Now I have a little bit more of the amaranthus I want to pop in. I'm just going to turn this around and see where I want to put it in. This one in through here just needs anchoring in a little bit better. It's better. I want to put that in. Sometimes less is more. We won't do that. I might just have a little look here with the hydrangea. So a little box of hydrangea, I might just a little bit tuck that in through there and that'll hold onto that frame. And one more rose. I'll give those to you there, thank you, Faye. I'll give that to you there, Faye, as well. Thank you. I always keep the little boxes so I can put the flowers back into them. I'll tuck another one just in through there to keep that one company. Up. So that there is just showing something quite different, something quite special. You can do a lot of things with this frame. You can add fresh foliage to it, fresh plant material if you wanted to, but I thought we'd just show you a little autumn touch. 
even though it's a really hot day out there. <laughs> Definitely a summer day. There you go. So hope you enjoyed that one, but it's just showing you, when I go to my attend in Bunnings, I always have a little look around. Now, Ashley's looking at some other things, my favourite place to be. So I will go in and have a look and see what mechanics they've got there or things that I can make different mechanics out of that are going to last. They're very, they're, very, um, they're quite easy to work with, they're quite soft. I'll get Faye to bring one of the other ones over, one of the white ones over. And I'll just show you they're very soft, very pliable. Um, and I normally put them in a container that's sealed with a little bit of the silica gel sachets. And then this is how soft they are. You can just get them like this, nice and soft, easy. And then I fold the petals back to open them up. I actually have a whole lot coming in for a, a friend of mine that's doing a wedding and needed David Austin roses and we just couldn't get them. So I brought in a whole lot of silks, uh, of silks, a whole lot of these preserved. So they are a real rose, but what they do is they dehydrate, uh, they bleach them, well, kind of bleach them. They use ethanol and episol, take all the colour out, dry it out, and then they rehydrate it up with glycerine, natural food colourings, and they use like a fabric softener. And that's why they're so soft. But you can see they're just absolutely beautiful. That one over in here. Right, yeah, this one's a little bit tricky. This is a new design concept I've been working with. But Faye's been a little bit worried about bringing it over. Okay, that's lovely. Thanks, Faye. Thank you. So, this here is a new design concept I've been working with. So, I've got my two glass vases, and I've made here this is using flax, and I've shredded the flax. And then I have woven it onto a copper wreath frame. I folded it in half. And then I have, so when I've shredded it, if I put the, put the here. Yeah. Yeah. I have got here, um, I haven't got my towel with me, but I just shred the flax with using a pin holder to shred my flax, like so. And I have another design that I'm working on at the moment, but I couldn't do that for this demo, but I'm working on another project. Um, and then I just shred it. And then I'll shred the whole thing. I'll just cut that bit off just to show you. I shred it. Uh, oh, thanks, Faye. Faye's looks like she's looking after me. Thank you, mate. Um, and then I just get it like this, and then I fold it in half, and then I'll wrap it around something. So I might say I'll wrap it around the stick. And then I just do like you're doing weaving. You know, like everything at the moment is using all the macrame. Like a, and I just weave, wave it on like this. So it's going to hold. And then I pre-curled it. So then I roll it up in like a giant pin curl and I leave it stay like that till it was completely dry. And then this is how it's come out. And I've mounted it onto the, my two glass vases. I wanted that lovely, there's something about water to me. I just love water. And then just a bit of the flax that hasn't been uh, stripped, I've put here. In here, I've tied a whole lot of um, test tubes. I also have some of these balls. These come up from uh, Invercargill, the bottom of the South Island. And when the waves come in, it rotted um, the grass is up in the dunes around and it forms its own natural spheres. So I've popped them up into the design as well. And I'm just going to pop in here. I have got some orange, uh, what are those ones, mini jubas. I've also, I wanted a little bit of green maybe. I was thinking about that. Um, I also have here some of the seeds of my uh, pyrus. I love it when it's starting to come through. It goes from its um, flowers, its buds, through to its flowers, and now it's into its seeds. And I'm just going to thread these in through here. I'm going to tie that in through there. Another little one coming over the top like that. Put these with that anchor in here. Just anchor that in here. Put little hooks for them to hook into. How's that looking? Is that joint? I need a little bit more fabric. A bit more mm, coming. A little bit more. A little bit more coming down, I think. Might need a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to. Pardon? Good idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I need a little bit more. So I'm going to pre wire this with some bullion wire and I'm going to make a garland of these to come down. Okay. So just overlaying them. I want them longer, so I'm going to make like a garland and just overlay them. So I'm just joining them as I'm working on the winding onto the stem. 
Nature's pretty good, but didn't quite happen long enough for what I wanted. All right, another one. Oops, another one in through here. Making my way back. Red looks a lot longer. That's more what I wanted to get rid of the leaves. I don't want the leaves on there. Pull them through. And I'm going to come around to the front of the table and not trip on anything. Just going to have a little bit more of this to come in through here. That might be a bit much. There you go. Even a lot longer than that. That's too heavy now. So this is where your hairdressing skills come into it. So we're just going to do a little bit of selective pruning. And I can't say to this one, give it six weeks and it'll grow back, because it won't. <laughs> right, just pop that in through there. This will be a little bit better. Come in through here. This will have the berries to come down, the seeds to come down, and through there, and follow that line. Through there, I'm going to try that up. Better, a little bit more here. That's it. It looks better. And then I'll just secure that up with a little bit of wire. A bit concentrating going on here, but it's just it's fiddly work. Just so it doesn't slip. Put it in there, we'll cut those off. That's better. Sometimes you just need to have a bit of a play, you know. Now I'm going to put in here some of my lovely gerbers to take the colour over. Popping them in the tubes that are here. I've got test tubes already placed and tied in. Another one up there. Another one out through the back here. Just to give you a bit of depth in the design. Colour balance, then another one over through here. Here, the birds outside, it's beautiful out there today. <laughs> Sound gorgeous, don't know if they run out through there. Might lift that one up just a teeny bit. It's looking good, actually. I might swap them over. That one's a little bit bigger. It's better. A little baby down and through there, like this. And then I'm just going to cut. I love to use the cymbidiums. Because they make such a wonderful display, you can chop them up, you can do them as one big long length, you can do whatever you want to do, but that touch of green will just freshen us right up. Put it out through there. I'm just going to tuck that right under there. A little bit of green coming down and through this way. Into the tube. This is just a new concept that I've been working on, and I really liked the idea of the flax coming through the flowers on the top. I might just want to put a little bit down through here, take the eye right down. Same on the opposite side, couple out through here. Just a little bit of these berries, maybe just tuck a few of these in as well. Don't need to be seen completely. I just want to tuck those in through there just a little bit. I think the best thing about floral art is we get to play, we get to experiment, and I just love doing that. My favorite thing to do. So I think that's just about it. Just tuck that one here down. More up through here. How's that looking? Is that looking balanced from your side? Looking pretty balanced? Yeah. So I don't really want to bring too much down here. If I wanted to, I could always bring a jubra down and through here, but I like the lightness of the design and keeping the colour at the top. It's my ray of sunshine. So there you go. So that's that design there. So I hope you enjoyed that one. It's a little bit different, that one. But um, I'm all about doing different. Now, if you like, I'll move this one over if you like, say. I might take it down the other end. <coughs> Thank you.
So that's just showing how by using the formium, shredding it, rolling it, drying it, we can manipulate it into many different forms. And I just wanted the natural cascade to come through. So that's lovely. Thank you, Faye. Right. What's that? Oh, turn table. Oh, she's getting me trained. There you go, buddy. <laughs> so this one is my coral design. So I've got here, this is just all preserved roses. This is a preserved David Austin. And I wanted the coral color. But you could do this with anything. If you've got pods, cones, moss, lichen, anything, you could actually make this one solid form that you have here. But make sure you repeat it into the top that you've got onto the top of your design. So I've just collected a few special things from the garden. And in here I have got a couple of my lovely um, shells and I've got a coral insect and this is what really caught my eye. I thought, oh, I really want to use the coral and I put a little bit of floral foam on the inside of these so that we can actually have the flowers coming through. So into that I'm just going to pop a little bit of, um, this is the foliage of one of my hellebores, it's a more of a grey foliage so I thought, oh, we need a little bit of that there so I'm just going to put a little bit of this in, pop it in there. Bring my eye back just a little bit. It's just a little piece of fine, so don't get too carried away with what you're putting in. Little colors here that I'm going to use. My little Zandadisha, so I'll put some of these in. And a lovely coral color. Now, if you're worried about the fact that it's going to be quite green compared to everything else, I do have some white stem tips that I like to use the stem tips tape rather than using the parafilm. Um, and I'm just going to tape these, and that way it, will, it won't look so obvious that they're big, long green stems going in amongst all the white and the other plant material that I've got here. I've got that sticking in our mind over the top of that as well. Through here, a little friend. Again, I'll tape that one as well. putting these in through here um, and so I was really just trying to find something it's about also the space and underneath now I could make this into a lovely curve if I wanted to with this frame but I decided I rather like the shape of this when I was doing this design so that's why I've gone into this shape pop that one in through into there and then I've got a little frame here that I'll pop into this little bit of foam in there my eye in I might come this way bring my eye back down Go in there, bring that back down. Um, and it really was just having a look to see what I had in the right colorings. So I'm going to turn this around now just so that I can have a little look at where I'm at with this. Put this one through here. Having over time, so I think we're going not too bad. <laughs> And the designs that um, I had the privilege of judging with Mary Sweeney were absolutely beautiful. Um, just some gorgeous, gorgeous work from you all. Really a privilege to judge, you know. Put another one in through here. That in. Just taking my eye through, just elevating that little design coming up. Now I did, I, was, I wasn't going to use this, but I have to. I have some real lily of the valley that's flowering in my garden. So I'm going to just, I want a little bit of the perfume to come into the top here. Really delicate, coming in through the top of the design here. That might go through there. Put them in. And coming back this other way, to keep it in the unity, take my eye over. I've got to be careful of the weight. So where I've balanced these shells, I've done it so I've got the weight balanced. It's all about having a visual and actual balance. So I've managed to do that here. A couple of these just in through here. Lovely lily of the valley. More in through here. I have these growing around the back of the house here, and it's just it really likes where it is. So that's good. through there. Now just have a bit of a look myself, make sure I'm happy with the way that's looking so far. Looks like a couple of satellite dishes, we need to sort that out. Can't have that, but both plates are going to be in the same direction here. So I'm just going to pop that one in through there. That's better. Just soften it a bit. Now I was going to use some of this um, the jelly. We're going to have too many textures happening and it's going to confuse the eye. So I just want just a little bit of this in, not too much. 
and I'm just going to use the buds. I felt the flowers were just too much. So use some of the little buds in here, again, for a contrast and surrounding them. And through there, taking my eye through, just that little bit coming up. But now we need to add a little bit of unity. And I thought, now how am I going to bring that colour up? Well, I've got here, now I've got these from Poo um, Poo gave these to me, the little buddy tails. And I thought the lovely velvety texture was rather cute. And I thought it would bring, bring the colour up into the design. Faye's nodding. <laughs> she likes these ones. So I'm just going to put in some of the lovely little bunny's tails. And then a lovely textural contrast again. And the real velvety. And that little hint of coral coming up into the design. No, that's great. Thanks, Faye. A little bit of bunny tails coming through. Just bring that little bit of coral colour up. It's all about unity coming up into the design. A bit more on this side, just into the two shells. And when you're using the um, netting that I've got here, the mesh, you can with some of these, if I want to bring a little bit of colour through, which I have started to do, you can weave into the, into the netting and it'll just also hold these into place. So I've got a couple here, I'm going to put a little bit of the colour down through here, not too much, just a little bit weaving it in through the frame. Whoops. So, you know, you get these little treasures and sometimes you just have the perfect thing for them to be able to use. Put a couple of those in there. But I still feel we haven't got the unity with that container. So what I'm going to do is put just two roses in there. So I've got so a couple of the little roses. So I thought I'd just wire these and just put two little roses in amongst it here. And I've got little pinholes in the back bottom of them. I'll get that there. Again, get my white tape. Hold it there. Tape around it. This is just going to give me a little bit more to hold it into the um, shell. And this also is going to give me unity. It's going to link me. Why have you got that sphere full of those beautiful roses? It's not linking to the top, though. So by popping this one little rose in each of these shells, it's going to give me unity. It's going to understand why am I linking those two. Bit more I want. Think of this. Okay. Just a little more of the tape, taping around it. Taping around it. I'm taping around it. Hands are getting hot and spouting. Somebody's asking, what's the structure made of? Uh, the structure is made from um, welding rods, um, aluminium welding rods, actually. Um, and then I bound over the top of that some binding wire and I spun all the edge here with binding wire. Um, and then I have stitched onto that. It's a, it's a mesh. It's like um, a nylon type of mesh that's on the top. So I can bring that up and show you a bit closer. Might do that if you like, just to see it a little bit closer. Can you see the mesh there? See the mesh? And the wires yes. all being spun here. Then I've spun um, rods here. And then I've opened the arms up and underneath to support this to elevate it and give me the space. And I have a bracing one at the back here just to really hold it. But it's about having that space and underneath here to showcase the flowers. Showing you just using a few shells um, and making this onto uh, the sphere. This is a lovely glass container that I've got on. It's actually candelabra that I've used as my mechanics to support that. Thanks, Faye. So just while Faye gets the next one, I'll pop this to the side. Or do you want to put this to the side, Faye? There you go. Thank you. But you can use anything. I had some skeletonized um, agave that I was going to use that I had done that with as well and hand stitched that onto the structure. I'll make the structures. Um, sometimes I'll use twigs, sometimes I'll use wool or twine or natural fibers. Um, the, the, the ones that are doing the workshops, so I'm using, um, I use lace sizal paper. That's also another thing that I really wanted the transparency of using that mesh on that one so you can see the sphere and underneath. Thanks, Faye. So, um, 
Okay, we'll deal with that one later. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so what we've got here is I've got a uh, one of my steams. A lot of you have seen me do this wire work before, but I've come up with a new way of doing the leaves. Now, sometimes I will use gum leaves. Sometimes I will use magnolia leaves, the grandiflora or the little gem with the velvet backing. This one I've used cork. And I was, um, I'll just bring this up a little bit closer to show you what I've actually done. Thanks, Ray. I'll just use this one here, mate. It's quite easier. We have got another camera, but it's playing up today. So uh, what I've got here is I've got a piece of cork and I when I've got one of these hole punches and this is the maple leaf. And then I just go through here and I cut the little maple leaf out or any shape that you want to cut out. But you can use any of your leaves that dry and stay their form. You can do this with like the gum leaves, yeah, like your magnolia or anything like that. But I wanted to use cork. And then what I've done here is on my wire structure, I've pulled all my wires to one side and then I've threaded them onto the wires and I've got a mass of them on here. And then I have these little tiny, tiny little test tubes that I've got here, little baby test tubes that I've put into there. And um, it's just a really neat structure to be able to do. I have got another one where I've got the hole punch, which is a lot bigger. And um, that looks amazing with doing onto a bigger structure, onto big dry branches, and you can put these leaves onto those. Another concept is you can glue them onto a sphere um, and have them, because it's transparent, you're going to see the leaves put lights in this and you've got a really neat sphere with the leaves on. Lots and lots of options. Uh, so this is a really good technique to do and to learn and to play with. I'll put those in there. And then you end up with a really neat structure. And then all I'm going to do here, this I just had a few flowers in this colour, so I'm just going to disperse them in through the design. But again, keeping the flower to one variety, don't be tempted to put a whole lot of different varieties in. We want to keep it quite simple. So if you've got, I didn't, couldn't get any of the little orchids, so I've just gone to the smaller cymbidiums and the colourings that I wanted. So bring these over here. Beautiful autumn toning. We're just carefully going to cut these individual blooms off and pop them in through here. You're doing a great job, Faye. <laughs> put another one in through here. They just put them through. We want balance in through the design. So I've only got, a, I think I've got 10 blooms. So there's a lot more tubes than that on here. Depending on what I'm using, um, depends how many tubes I will use. Um, how many blooms I'll use. These are slightly bigger, so I can get away with these ones. I'm turning that around. Look at that beautiful cymbidium. And the idea is to have the rhythm and the line created on this side, that space, that void in through here, with the texture and the pattern and the forms on this side. It gives a really nice contrast, I felt. That one in through there. Here. This lovely little orchid. If you wanted to go for, um, wanted to do a colour harmony, you could go contrasting with the copper, but I decided I really liked this orchid. So my friend Amelia actually said, Francie, would you like this orchid? And I was like, oh, I've got to have that orchid. So it's perfect. When I showed her the structure, she said, oh, it'll go perfect with what you're doing. So I thought, right, I'll bring that in through there. Another little one right down low. And then one more. One out through here, I think. Just gently, gently. So don't be tempted. Some of the wires haven't got anything on it, but that's the idea. That is about line and repetition of line and the design. Right, just taking that in through there. So that is all that design is just using those few orchids, taking your eye right up with having the sphere on the top for a contrast. I could spay that copper if I wanted to, or I could use that sphere that had the, um, the cork leaves on it. I would sort of rather like the contrast and the textures. So I hope you enjoyed that design there and a little technique that you can play around with. So the next design I'm going to do, some of you may have seen, but um, I've been getting asked a lot about the technique and how I actually made this. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to actually just show you how I've done it. And I was a bit worried because it's black on black. So um, this could be a bit tricky, but 
I could bring this up and show you. So I'm not even sure if you can see um, one of the wooden frames that I've made. And then inside here, I've used um, some foam core board and then I've blocked, blocked it out at the back here. Um, and the reason why I've used the foam core board is I like to be able to punch holes through it to be able to put my mechanics to hold my test tubes in place. Or if I'm putting um, uh, this design particular one here, I had a whole white phalaenopsis plant from the roots, the leaves to the flower stem, and I can then so I could find it and hold it into the framework. So in this case here, I've um, got charcoal. This is all charcoal that's been glued onto the um, onto the foam core board. And the re reason I did that is I hot glued it all on, and then I made an emulsion of the wood PVA glue. Now you've got to get the good quality wood PVA glue. It is actually a bit like some of those other glues where you do for outside. You need the exterior one because it's waterproof. Um, and then you put in a bit of the acrylic black paint or whatever color paint you want in the color that you want it to dry to. Now the um, glue will dry clear and the color will show. So this here, is the black is what I wanted to see. The black is what I'm seeing. The glue, the glue has been tinted. So it's uh, given a really good concept. So I've got the um, charcoal up the top here. I've got a piece in the middle here where I wanted a, a line. Um, so in there, I've used a very fine chip, stone chip that I've glued onto there. And then I've gone to the bigger area of the charcoal. And you'll see the proportions of how I've worked this design to be able to get my proportions right visually. So I've got my proportions in there. Um, and then I thought, well, instead of using the white phalaenopsis, I'm going to use the preserved lime green amaranthus. And I'll probably get Faye to pass me the um, jubras as I'm working. Uh, but you can do anything with this. So, so these frames are fabulous to work with. So I'm just going to pop in here some of the amaranthus. And I've got my seahorse test tubes in here. So I'll work this in through here. Get that in through, just strip it in a little bit more, I think. And the other couple of tubes. A little bit in through this side. And then at the back, this is why I use the foam core board. You will see I've punched holes through and the seahorse test tubes are being held with flat aluminium wire that I've put around the neck of the tube. I've put the two points through the foam core board, split them apart like a split pin, and that's what's supporting them. So now I'm just going to get Faye to pass me some tubes. I might use the large ones first if I could, Faye. Thank you, my friend. Here. I like sharing my techniques and I think in our floral art, that's why I love floral art so much, we're always willing to share ideas uh, because it's all about friendship and flowers at the end of the day, isn't it, Faye? Sure. Yep. So I don't know if I need any more. Can you see that's just very simplistic? And by using the split pins, you can Clip them back together, push the tube back out, clean the test tube, refill them, and put any of your special flowers in there. And that's that design there. So uh, we might pop that one just in the middle here, I think, Faye. So I've only got two more to do, and I think we're just about sorted. Thanks, Faye. Right. Now, um, what are we doing next? Or is that the last one? I've got two more. Right, one more, really. One more. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring this one over. It's a bit hard to carry. Um, no, I'll bring this one over here. Can you see this okay? Absolutely amazing. This here is actually a Christmas tree that I made with a wooden frame that I turned upside down. And then I've nailed onto it the birch bark. And I use the gorgeous little tacks that you can get. Some really neat decorative tacks, and I've tacked that onto my wooden frame. I have it on my steel spike. And then on here, I have got um, this lovely, oh, I forgot the name of it now, but the, the um, walking stick, you know. Oh, Harry Lord. Harry Lord is walking stick we call it here. <laughs> yeah, and um, I've got that drive here. I've put some ear plants because I can leave to see, I just miss them, and they, they'll, they'll stay on here. In the middle, I really wanted to frame the contrast and texture. So I've got here Mullenbeckia, and this we have I'm growing out the back of the house here, and it's got the leaves on, and I wanted that to be inside the frame. And this was a last minute design because I've had some gorgeous flowers. I thought I've got to show you the flowers. I can't not use it. And this is about using just some of your special blooms. So this here I'm using 
And this reminds me of my friend Jenny Chase over in America because she had the most beautiful um, and took me on a drive where there were the most beautiful peony roses. So I thought I'm going to put some peonies up in here. Beautiful peonies. And you can just use any of your flowers. You've got any of your special blooms that you can use and just keep refreshing them. This one here might disintegrate because it's just about out, completely out. But I thought, no, I'm going to still use it. We will make it work today. And then I've got, I mean, look how beautiful is this? This is just absolutely stunning. So I thought, right, so I'm going to put the other one's going to go here. Just in there like that. You don't need a lot. And because I've only got, I don't think I'll use the orchid, I might leave the orchid actually, Faye. I haven't, I need a little bit more of that depth of colour. I thought I'd group together a whole lot of hookra uh, because it looks like the same form if I put them together in a group. And I thought I'd just put them all together in that container there, in that test tube, pop that in there like this, and that just gives me another bit of line, bit of balance in through there. And um, that's all that design is. It's really, really simple design. So I'll take a better picture of this so that you can actually see this one. Um, it's well worth having a go at making. Um, you just reuse whatever you've got. Now, the last design, Faye's going to help me. I'm just going to move this to the side. Sorry, I'm, I'm in my garage. Right. Okay. Oops. And I'll just cut my gap to you, Faye. That's awesome. How's that going to go? It's perfect. So this big design that I have at the back here, this is quite a big circle that I have. And my favourite flower is irises. And I thought, even though we're oceans apart, we're still friends in flowers. And I've encircled my favourite flower. And that's just for all of you out there. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that little demo. Um, and thank you very, very much. Come here, Faye. I need to thank my Faye. <laughs> Thank you, Faye. She's been giving me a hand and behind the scenes. You can't do it on your own. You really need to help your friends. Well, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of you out there, thank you, Madhu. Thank you, Kim. And um, did one have a fabulous day. So that's my demo. Hi, <laughs> Jean. Oh, good day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've been honoured to uh, give the vote of thanks to you on behalf of the New South Wales Floral Art Association. Do thank you so much. Um, from the very beginning, it's been mesmerising. Um, and on behalf of the members, I've, I've got to read this, love. You know what I'm like, can't remember. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Uh, so on behalf of the members of New South Wales Floral Art Association, members of the many clubs and state bodies uh, from around Australia and floral art friends from around the globe. So we've had so many visitors this morning. Um, it's been truly wonderful. Um, we've also, we would like to extend a huge thank you to you. And I wish we were there in person, um, absolutely, um, for sharing your wonderful floral art talents and expertise with us this morning. Francine, your designs are out of this world, full of innovations, techniques, and personal touches, which you have demonstrated for us today. In your friendly, easygoing manner, and each design being inspirational. From the very first design, I hope you don't mind standing listening to this, um, using those humble nasturtiums. How many people would think of using those just beautiful little flowers? And then to, to the, um, the framer works with the liquid amber seed heads. Wow. Um, day of sunshine, shredded flax, um, bright gerberas and orchids, um, lily of the valley. Wow. And even the beautiful plant materials all from your garden and the peonies. Thank you so much. The hours of preparation that you must have done for these designs and for us today, we are truly grateful. And also thank you to Faye for being your able assistant. Um, Although we Australian floral designers could not be together in person for our convention, which we were hoping to, we feel very close sharing your demonstration across the ditch. Once again, our thanks and appreciation is extended to you, Francine, for sure sharing your expertise. Thank you so much.
You're extremely welcome. And Mary, it's been an absolute privilege. And judging with you and seeing what you're doing over the year, you're very talented designer. So thank you for letting me be a part of it.